merci de prendre le rendez-vous pour visionner cette capsule vidéo. Mon nom est Libi Rivazano, je coordonne le cycle de conférences des midi conférences des jeunes chercheurs du Centre de recherche en droit public avec ma collègue Eve Comon, qui vous présentera la communication de notre conférencier du jour. Notre conférencier du jour a pour nom Alexis Marco Rouleau. Il est candidat au doctorat en criminologie à l'Université de Montréal sous la direction de la professeure Marion Vacherie. Euh, puisant dans les approches critiques, sa thèse vise à comprendre l'interaction des femmes à travers l'analyse des loisirs offerts et pratiqués en détention. Plus largement, Alexis est animé par les enjeux de justice sociale et s'intéresse ainsi au contrôle social et pénal des populations marginalisées. Il coordonne présentement une recherche partenariale portant sur la réintégration socio-communautaire des Premières Nations et Inou, judiciarisée et par le passé a été impliqué dans une recherche participative portant sur le bien-être des jeunes trans. Je vous invite à... Écoutez la présentation de, notre, de ma collègue Eve Gaumont. Merci. The presentation you're about to watch um, discusses abolitionism. It is a forefront matter these days. Indeed, as um, Alex Marcolo will point out, there are many events that have forced us to take a closer look at uh, prisons in the past few months. Their representation adopts a practical approach. They propose reform that aim to reduce reliance on harmful practices in prisons. Here, for instance, they'll talk about uh, prison labor and strip searches. I personally have learned a lot through this presentation, and I hope you'll do as well. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Alexis, and today I'll tell you a little bit about prison labor and strip searches in Quebec prisons. So in the current context, there's been a lot of mobilizations around Black Lives Matter and defunding the police uh, worldwide in the past six months, as well as a second Me Too wave in Quebec and mobilizations to get pr people out of prison um, due to the pandemic worldwide as well. To me, that speaks to abolitionist themes. So what is abolitionism? Uh, it's theory and praxis that aims to eliminate oppressive institutions and to rethink responsibility, support and safety, and as well as focusing on building community. Abolition is often criticized as being idealistic or utopic, which is why I focus on praxis. For instance, reforms that uh, aim to reduce reliance on harmful practices. In this presentation, I uh, propose an abolitionist analysis of correctional law in Quebec, the Loi sur le système correctionnel du Québec, or LSCQ. I emphasize praxis as well as gender and race. Why this specific case? Um, we, well, in Quebec, um, women are underrepresented in prison, which is fine. Um, but there's a problem with indigenous women's representation in prisons. So although their demographic weight in the general population is less than 2%, they are about 10% of the women jail population. So that's extremely high and uh, worrisome. Uh, furthermore, there are problems with living condition in jails for women in Quebec. Um, so in one of them, since the past four years, the Ombudsman has been decrying the conditions. And there's even been an injunction request against the prison, which was denied last year. Um, this prison remains in use to this day. So in this pr uh, presentation, I start from the, the, the context put forth um, in the current mobilizations, so systemic racism and problems of sexual violence. And I focus on gendered and racial problems with incarceration from a socio-historical point of view. So this is why I focus on prison labor and strip searches. I put forth relevance to current correctional law in these two themes and discuss practical consequences of poor framing of prison labor and strip searches in the LSCQ, as well as discussing tangible abolitionist reforms that could be um, implemented. So for prison labor, uh, historically prison labor is an important issue because it has been linked to um, as a historical continuity with racism, slavery, and colonialism. So the fact that uh, mass incarceration uh, today uh, has an overrepresentation of black people, people of color, uh, indigenous people is understood as a way to keep, to maintain racist, uh, systemic racism and to even get some cheap labor done by paying people very little, um, which serves the prison industrial complex. 
sexism, racism, and classism are also entwined in prison labor because historically, um, programs in prison aim to refeminize women by training them to be good little servants once they get out of prison, so domesticity training. What about right now in the LSCQ? Well, right now, um, people who work in prison, in jails, excuse me, are paid 35% of minimum wage. And the first, after this 35% chop, 10% um, are also removed to go fund activities and programs. The rest is split in two. So for each hour of labor, a person is paid less than $2 an hour. Um, that goes to their commissary allowance. And $2 an hour go into a trust account which is made available to the person once they're released from jail. What does this mean for women? Well, on average, women have about 16 hours of work for, uh, per job weekly, which represents $32 uh, per week, which are readily available to women, and $129 per month. So this is um, a problem because in prison, cost of life is extremely expensive. So commissary costs a lot, and if you have uh, small wages and small, um, a small commissary allowance that means you can really purchase adequate menstrual products. So there's a problem with meager wages which aren't easy to compensate uh, within jails because in Quebec um, if you're incarcerated you're not eligible for welfare and most people in prison come from marginalized backgrounds so that means that they can't necessarily turn to family to ask excuse me can you give me a little money so I can buy tampons and whatnot. This matters because it may lead to differential quality of life in prison and to dangerous solutions um, to menstruation. So there's this example of women in a French prison who, um, because they didn't have proper menstrual products, they would chop off the top of a water bottle and use that as a menstrual cup, which sounds very dangerous if you ask me. Also, what do you do once you're released if all you've saved of your month of incarceration is $129 and how do you take care of your kids, how do you even get a job since you have a criminal record, and how do you provide for yourself and your family um, if we consider gender and racial wage gaps which persist in Canada to this day. So a concrete way of reframing these problems uh, with correctional law as pertains to prison labor and wages is to pay minimum wage for minimum wage labor and to offer worker protections, um, to use the funds transparently and only put um, people's wages in a trust account if they consent. And also to limit commissary prison profits to 10%, uh, which is what is done in the federal system in Canada. And also to freely uh, provide access to menstrual products without rations. And now for strip searches. So strip searches are relevant in the prison context because they are experienced as state-sanctioned sexual assault. So a huge proportion of women uh, have been victimized prior to incarceration, and it's even uh, it's, uh, for Indigenous women. So about 90% of Indigenous women who are incarcerated have been victimized in the past. And there's also the issue that strip searches may uh, be used by correctional officers to uh, camouflage rape or other forms of sexual violences. Uh, there's also historical continuity with colonialism and systemic racism because sexual assault was historically used to uh, ensure women's compliance and subservience to these harmful uh, structural violences. In Quebec jails, we know that there are problems with strip searches because of the injunction request I spoke about earlier. So some women report being strip searched in front of other people and one even remained naked for multiple minutes. To me, that might be because of the, the framing of strip searches in the LSCQ. So the LSCQ allows for strip searches conducted in routine circumstances. For instance, you're just going from your cell to your job or in non-routine situations. So um, for instance, if they believe uh, a crime might have been committed in prison or something. Some um, for some of the strip searches. So that's um, that a person in similar circumstances would interpret the risk similarly. So they need reasonable grounds to conduct a strip search if they believe a weapon is hidden, for example, but they don't need reasonable grounds to conduct a strip search if um, there's a situation that's more dangerous, like a hostage or a riot or something like that. A, a strip search must be authorized by a manager if it's non-routine, but if it's routine, it doesn't need to be. Um, 
And if there's an emergency, no authorization is required. And women are supposed to be the ones who search women unless there's an emergency as well. The problem with this is that it leaves a lot of space for discretion. So this is a problem because as we know, discretion, dis um, policing, prisons, et cetera, often has a lot of uh, problems in terms of discrimination. So racial profiling of black and indigenous women of color. Um, and as we know, Asians are overrepresented in prison. So some ways to address these problems is to frame strip searches as a last resort and to completely ban routine strip searches because anyways, they're not even supposed to exist per Canadian legal doctrine. Um, also to remove items and, and put them on before removing the next item and so on uh, to be the, that the person uh, strip searched be shielded from the camera with a screen or something, but that the guard remain visible to the camera and that someone of the same gen gender is always the one conducted a strip search with a supervisor's authorization as well as the searched person's consent. Argue that the grounds to conduct a strip search need to be redefined. So the potential gendered, racial, social, psychological, and physical harms caused by strip searches must be taken into account um, and they must be um, balanced out, they must be great that's prevented by the strip search. So the new question for grounds to conduct strip searches would be, is sexually assaulting someone justifiable given the circumstances I am attempting to prevent? And in most cases, the answer should be no. So in conclusion, um, abolitionist praxis means looking at the past to inform decisions about and even on our understanding of the present and then inform changes for the future and with long-term goals of building community and having a more humane approach to everything, basically. So thank you so much for listening. Um, you can contact me.